Welcome to the Home Health Virtual Training Program Part 1. My name is Charlotte Stenager and I am presenting Section C Cognitive Patterns. I'm a registered nurse with experience in acute and post-acute direct care, nursing education, and quality management, specifically in the home health setting. Currently, I'm a senior staff associate at Econometrica in Bethesda, Maryland. At the conclusion of this training, you should be able to demonstrate an understanding of the standardized patient assessment data elements identified in the new Section C cognitive patterns. Describe the intent, coding instructions, and definitions for select items in Section C. We'll start with an overview of the items in Section C cognitive patterns. This new section contains items related to the assessment and coding of cognitive patterns for home health patients. New items include C0100 should brief interview for mental status C0200 through C0500 be conducted. C0200 through C0500 brief interview for mental status, the BIMS. C1310 signs and symptoms of delirium from the CAM. And existing items placed in this section include CM1700, cognitive functioning, M1710, when confused, and M1720, when anxious. So let's start with C0100, should brief interview for mental status be conducted. This new OASIS E item is collected at start of care, resumption of care, and discharge. It simply asks if the brief interview for mental status, known as the BIMS, be conducted? There are two response options, yes and no. At start of care resumption of care assessment, it's important to try to complete as close to the time of the start of care resumption of care assessment as possible. And the same holds true for discharge. The intent of C0100 is to identify if the brief interview for mental status, the BIMS, a structured cognitive interview should occur. The rationale behind this is that most patients are able to attempt the brief interview for mental status. The BIMS is a structured cognitive interview and a structured cognitive test is more accurate and reliable than observation alone for observing cognitive performance. It is important to note, without an attempted structured cognitive interview, a patient might be mislabeled based on their appearance or assumed diagnosis. Structured interviews will efficiently provide insight into a patient's current condition that will enhance good care. Here are a few response specific instructions to consider when looking to code this item. Interact with the patient using their preferred language. Be sure the patient can hear you and have access to their preferred method for communication. If the patient appears unable to communicate, Offer alternatives such as writing, pointing, sign language, or cue cards. Determine if the patient is rarely never understood verbally, in writing, or using another method. If rarely never understood, skip items C0200 through C0500. In addition, the OASIS C defines the coding instructions for this item. Code zero no if the interview should not be conducted because the patient is rarely never understood, the patient cannot respond verbally in writing or using another method, an inter interpreter is needed but not available, then you will skip C0200 through C0500. Code one, yes, if the interview should be conducted because the patient is at least sometimes understood verbally in writing or using another method. And if an interpreter is needed, one is available. Proceed to C0200 repetition of three words. A dash is a valid response for this item. A dash indicates no information and CMS expects the dash use to be a rare occurrence. And remember, you will want to attempt to conduct this interview with all patients. Now let's take a look at the general guidance for conducting the BIMS. The BIMS is conducted at start of care, resumption of care, and discharge. It is composed of four sections, C0200, repetition of three words, C0300, temporal orientation, C0400, recall, 
and C0500, the BIM summary score. We will take a closer look at each of these items a little later in the presentation. The intent of this new item is to determine the patient's attention, orientation, and ability to register and recall information. So why are we doing the BIMS assessment? It has been found that direct, direct or performance-based testing of cognitive function decreases the chance of incorrect labeling of cognitive ability and improves the detection of delirium. Cognitively intact patients may appear to be cognitively impaired because of language barrier, hearing impairment, or a lack of social interaction. Some patients may appear to be, be more cognitively intact than they actually are. If cognitive impairment is incorrectly diagnosed or missed, appropriate communication, worthwhile activities, and therapies may not be offered. Now think about that and how having a better understanding of a patient's cognitive function could have a marked improvement in how you develop your plan of care. The OASIS-E offers basic interview instructions for the BIMS. Let's review those now. First, interview any patient not screened out by item C0100 should brief interview for mental status be conducted. Conduct the interview in a private setting if possible and be sure the patient can hear you. Patients with hearing impairment should be tested using their usual communication devices techniques as applicable. Try an external assistive device, headphones or a hearing amplifier, if you have any doubt about a patient's hearing ability and try to minimize background noise. Sit so the patient can see your face. Minimize glare by directing light sources away from the patient's face. Give an introduction before starting the interview. The guidance provides suggested language. I would like to ask you some questions. We ask everyone these same questions. This will help us provide you with better care. Some of the questions may be very easy while others may be more difficult. Some other things to consider. If the patient expresses concern that you are testing their memory, reply, we ask these questions of everyone so we can make sure that our care will meet your needs. Directly ask the patient each item in C0200 through C0400 in one sitting and in the order provided. If the patient chooses not to answer a particular item, accept the refusal and move on to the next question. For C0200 through C0400C, code refusals as incorrect, no answer, or could not recall. The BIMS may be in, administered in writing. For those instructions, we invite you to review the Section C guidance in the OASIS-E for more information. And remember, when completing the BIMS at Start of Care and Resumption of Care and Discharge, complete as close to the time of the Start of Care, Resumption of Care or Discharge, respectively. Please note, Specific coding instructions for each individual item within the BIMS will be reviewed later in the presentation. Now let's review some basic definitions that will be used in the instructions and tips that follow. A nonsensical response. A nonsensical response is a response that is unrelated, incomprehensible, or incoherent. It is not informative with respect to the item being rated. A complete in interview. The BIMS interview is considered complete if the patient attempted and provided relevant answers to at least four of the questions included in C0200 through C0400C. Note, relevant answers do not need to be correct, but they do need to be related to the question. Here's a coding tip for your consideration. Nonsensical responses, incorrect answers, in questions the patient chooses not to answer should be coded as zero. The assessing clinician should track the reason for coding the answers as zero because this information will be used, will be used later for the coding of the summary score in C0500. So when you are ready to conduct a BIMS interview, be sure that you have a place to capture notes like this. A pen, a notepad would be handy. These would be important notes for later in your assessment. Okay, let's talk about stopping the interview before it's complete. You should stop the interview after completing C0300C day of the week if 
Uh, responses have been nonsensical, meaning any response that's unrelated, incomprehensible, or incoherent, not informative with respect, with respect to the item being rated, or there has been no verbal or written responses to any of the questions up to this point, or there has been no verbal, written, or written responses to some of the questions up to this point, and for all others, the patient has given a nonsensical response. This is precisely why you're instructed to attempt the BIMS on all patients. You have a response for every type of patient that you may come across. Okay, so you have stopped the interview. How do you, how do you now code this item? So you will code a dash in C0400A, B, and C, and code 99 in the summary score in C0500 BIM summary score. Consider this. Code zero is used to represent three types of responses, incorrect, nonsensical, and questions the patient chooses not to answer or refusals. Now, if all responses to C0200, C0300A, B, and C are zero because answers are incorrect, continue the interview. So let's think about this. You can use code zero for a number of reasons, an incorrect answer, if the patient chooses not to respond, or if the answer is nonsensical. But whether you continue the interview past C0300C depends on the reason why you coded these items as zero. You see how that pen and notepad might come in handy? Let's delve a little bit more into this, shall we? Here's an example of an incorrect response. Assessing clinician asks the patient to state the year. The patient replies, it's 1935. The answer is incorrect, but related to the question. So the answer is coded as zero incorrect, but would not be considered a nonsensical response. The answer is wrong, but it is logical and relates to the question. Now for an example of a refusal. Assessing clinician asks the patient to state the year. The patient says, oh, what difference does the year make when you're as old as I am? The clinician asks the patient to try to name the year and the patient shrugs. The answer is coded zero incorrect, but would not be considered a nonsensical response. The answer is wrong because a refusal is considered a wrong answer, but the patient's comments, comment is logical and clearly relates to the question. Now, finally, let's look at an example of a nonsensical response. Assessing clinician asks the patient to name the day of the week. The patient answers, blue, that's my favorite color. The clinician asks the patient the question again to confirm that the patient's not hearing the question incorrectly. And the patient answers with the same response. The answer is coded zero incorrect. The response is illogical and nonsensical. The answer is wrong and the patient's comment clearly does not relate to the question. It is nonsensical. Okay, so now let's get into the nitty gritty of these items that make up the BIMS. We'll start with C0200, repetition of three words. C0200, repetition of three words, starts by asking the patient to repeat three words, sock, blue, and bed. The rationale behind this is that the inability to repeat three words on the first attempt may indicate a memory impairment, a hearing impairment, a language barrier, or inattention that may be the sign, be a sign of delirium or other health issue. Now for another definition important in the assessment of this item, category Q. A category Q is a phrase that puts the word into context to help with learning and to serve as a hint that helps prompt the patient. The category Q for sock is something to wear. The category Q for blue is a color. For bed, the category Q is a piece of furniture. So these response specific instructions found in the OSSC will walk you through this interview. You start by saying to the patient, I'm going to say three words for you to remember. Please repeat the words after I've said all three. The words are sock, blue, and bed. Assessing clinicians need to use the words and related category cues as indicated. Immediately after presenting the three words, say to the patient, now tell me the three words. Note, 
If the interview is being conducted with an interpreter present, the interpreter should use the equivalent words and similar re relevant prompts for category cues. Now, after the patient's first attempt to repeat the items, if the patient correctly states all three words, say, that's right, the words are sock, something to wear, blue, a color, and bed, a piece of furniture, stating the category cue. Category cues serve as a hint that helps prompt the patient's recall ability. Putting words into context stimulates learning, fosters memory of the words that the patient will be asked to recall in item C0400, even among patients who are able to repeat the words immediately. Now let's just say that they didn't say all three words immediately. After the patient's first attempt to repeat the items, if the patient recalled two or fewer words, code C0200 repetition of three words according to the recall on this first attempt. Then say to the patient, let me say the three words again. They are sock, something to wear, blue, a color, and bed, a piece of furniture. Now tell me the three words. If the patient still does not recall all three words correctly, you may repeat the words and category cues one more time. Now, don't, do not code the number of repeated words on the second or third attempt. And consider, if the patient does not repeat all three words after three attempts, reassess their ability to hear. If the patient can hear, move on to the next question. If they're unable to hear, Attempt to maximize hearing by altering the environment or using a hearing amplifier before proceeding. And for the coding, record the maximum number of words that the patient correctly repeated on the first attempt. This will be any number between zero and three. Code zero, none, if the patient did not repeat any of the three words on the first attempt. Code one, one, if the patient repeated only one of the three words on the first attempt. Code two, two, if the patient repeated only two of the three words on the first attempt. Code three, three, if the patient repeated all three words on the first attempt. A dash is a valid response for this item and indicates no information. CMS expects dash use to be a rare occurrence. Now, for a patient who didn't repeat three words on the first attempt, this would be coded as zero, none, not as no information. So you attempted the interview and you have information about the patient's ability to repeat the three words. So the dash would not be used in this example. Here are a few coding tips to help you code C0200. The words may be recalled in any order and in any context. For example, if the words were repeated back in a sentence, they would be counted as repeating the words. Do not score the number of repeated words on the second or third attempt. These attempts will help with learning the item, but only the number correct on the first attempt should go into the total score. Do not record the number of attempts that the patient needed to complete the item. Now let's look at C0300C, temporal orientation. The assessment instrument for C0300C is comprised of three sections. C0300A, able to report the correct year. C0300B, able to report the correct month. And C0300C, able to report the correct day of the week. So why is this important to assess? A lack of temporal orientation may lead to decreased communication or participation in activities. And not being, a, not being oriented may be frustrating or frightening. And think again how, not, how knowing this could help inform your individualized plan of care for your patients. Let's start with a definition. What is temporal orientation? In general, it's the ability to place one's sight, oneself in correct time. For BIMS, it is the ability to indicate the correct date in the current surroundings. Again, the OASIS E guides us through this assessment. You will start by asking the patient each of the three questions in item C0300 separately. Allow the patient up to 30 seconds for each answer and do not provide clues. 
If the patient specifically asks for clues, for example, is this the day my daughter always visits? Respond by saying, I need to know if you can answer this question without any help from me. For C0300A able to report the correct year, ask the patient, please tell me what year it is right now. Then select one of these codes. Code zero, missed by greater than five years or no answer. If the patient's answer is incorrect and is greater than five years from the current year, or the patient chooses not to answer the item, or the answer is nonsensical. Code one, missed by two to five years, if the patient's answer is incorrect and is within two to five years from the current year. Code two, missed by one year, if the patient's answer is incorrect and is within one year from the current year. Code three, correct, if the patient states the correct year. A dash is a valid response for this item. For C0300B, ask the patient, what month are we in right now? Then select one of these codes. Code zero, missed by greater than one month or no answer, if the patient's answer is incorrect by more than one month, or if the patient chooses not to answer the item, or the answer is nonsensical. Code one, missed by six days to one month, if the patient's answer is accurate within six days to one month. Code two, accurate within five days, if the patient's answer is accurate within five days, counting the current day date as day one. A dash is a valid response for this item. Now remember, count the current day as day one when, we when determining the response was accurate within five days or missed by six days to one month. So if it is July 2nd and your patient says it's June, June is accurate within five days. Or did your patient miss it by six days to one month? Think about that. It would be considered accurate within five days, correct? June 30th, which is June, is within five days of June of July 2nd, right? Okay. And finally, for C0300C, able to report the correct day of the week, you will ask your patient, what day of the week is today? Then select one of the following codes. Code zero, incorrect, nor no answer. If the, if the answer is incorrect or the patient cho chooses not to answer the item or if the answer is nonsensical. Code one, correct. If the answer is correct, a dash is a valid response for this item. Now remember, it is at this point that you should consider how you coded the bins to determine if you should continue the interview. Now let's look at C0400 recall. So recall, can you recall what happened some 20 slides ago? Well, that's exactly what we'll be asking of our patients. So C0400 recall is composed of three sections. C0400A, able to recall SOC, C0400B, able to recall blue, and C0400C, able to recall bed. The rationale, the rationale here makes sense as to why we are doing this assessment. Many persons with cognitive impairment can be helped to recall if provided cues, and providing memory cues can help maximize a patient's cognitive function and decrease frustration for those patients who respond. And again, consider the insight that this can provide when developing your plan of care. Once again, the OACC provides us with the guidance on how to conduct this standardized assessment. First, ask the patient, let's go back to an earlier question. What were those three words that I asked you to repeat? Allow up to five seconds for spontaneous recall of each word. For any word that is not correctly recalled after five seconds, provide the category Q used in C0200 repetition of three words. Category Q should be used only after the patient is unable to recall one or more of the three words. Allow up to five seconds after category queuing for each missed word to be recalled. Now each step is very specific here and important, so be sure to follow these right to the letter. 
So for coding this item, code zero, no, could not recall. If the patient cannot recall the word even after being given the category Q, or if the patient responds with a nonsensical answer or chooses not to answer the item. Code one, yes, after queuing, if the patient requires the category Q to remember the word. Code two, yes, no Q required, if the patient correctly remembers the word spontaneously without queuing. A dash is a valid response for this item. Now for a very important distinction. If on the first try without queuing, okay, just think about that, without queuing, the patient names multiple items in a category, one of which is correct, they should be coded as correct for that item. Now contrast, to this contrast that to this next statement. If, however, the assessing clinician gives the patient the cue, okay, and the patient then names multiple items in that category, the item is coded as could not recall, even if the correct item was in the list. So this all has to do with either queuing or not queuing. So just think about that. Now let's wrap up the BIMS. And we'll do that by looking at C0500, the BIMS summary score. This item identifies the total score for all the questions that were asked in C0200 through C0400. Consider that the total score decreases the chance of incorrect labeling of cognitive ability and improves the detection of delirium. It provides staff with a more reliable estimate of a patient's function and allows staff interactions with a patient that are based on a more accurate impression about the patient's ability. Now imagine having that reliable estimate of function and how that could provide insight into how you would care for your patient. Pretty important, right? It's important to note that the BIMS total score is highly correlated with, a mini, with the mini mental state exam, MMSE scores. Scores from a carefully conducted BIMS assessment where the patient can hear all the questions and the patient is not delirious suggests the following distributions. 13 to 15, cognitively intact. Eight to 12, moderately impaired. Zero to seven, severe impairment. The response specific instructions for C0500 are pretty simple. After completing C0200 through C0400, add up the values for all questions from C0200 through C0400. Now for the coding instructions. Enter the total score as a two digit number on your assessment instrument. The total possible BIM scores ranges from 00 to 15. If the patient chooses not to answer a specific question, that question is coded as incorrect and the item is counts, to, counts in the total score. However, if the patient chooses not to answer four or more items, then the interview is coded as incomplete. To be considered a completed interview, the patient had to attempt and provide relevant answers to at least four of the questions included in C0200 through C0400C. To be relevant, a response only has to be related to the question, considered logical, but it does, it does not have to be correct. So one option for coding C0500 is code 99. You should use code 99, 99, unable to complete interview, if the patient chooses not to participate in the BIMS, four or more items were coded zero because the patient chose, chose not to answer or gave non, a nonsensical response, or if any of the BIMS items is coded with a dash. Note, a zero score does not mean the BIMS was incomplete. To be incomplete, the patient had to choose not to, not to answer or give un completely unrelated nonsensical responses to four or more of the items. Here's a coding tip for patient refusal. Occasionally a patient can communicate but chooses not to participate in the BIMS and therefore does not attempt any of the items in the section. This would be considered an incomplete interview. 
enter code 99 for C0500 BIM summary score. Okay, I hope that gives you a good start to understanding the coding of the BIMs. Now I know that was a lot for this new item in section C, but wait, there's more. C1310, signs and symptoms of delirium. This new item, C1310, signs and symptoms of delirium from the CAM consists of four elements. A, acute onset mental status changes, B, an attention, C, disorganized thinking, and D, altered level of consciousness. It is collected at start of care, resumption of care, and discharge. The intent of this item is to identify any signs and symptoms of acute mental status changes as compared to the patient's baseline status. Once again, we want a level set with a definition. So what is delirium? It is a mental disturbance characterized by new or acutely worsening confusion, disordered expression of thought, changes in level of consciousness or hallucinations. Having a better understanding of delirium is important for our home health patients. So let's consider the following. Delirium is associated with, associated with increased mortality, functional decline, development of worsening of incontinence, behavior problems, withdrawal from activities, rehospitalizations, and increased lengths of home health stay. Delirium can be misdiagnosed as dementia. A recent deterioration in cognitive function may indicate delirium, which may be reversible if detected and treated in a timely fashion. One other important term to consider, or other important terms to consider are the following. Inattention is defined as the reduced ability to maintain attention to external stimuli and to appropriately shift attention to new external stimuli. The patient seems unaware or out of touch with their environment. For example, they may seem dazed, fixated, or have darting attention. And fluctuation. Fluctuation is defined as a behavior that tends to come and go and or increase or decrease in severity. The behavior may fluctuate over the course of the interview or during the assessment period. Fluctuating behavior may be noted by the assessing clinician, reported by staff or family, or documented in the medical record. And just as with the BIMS, the response-specific instructions in the OACC provides us the steps to and considerations for this assessment. Let's start by identifying when the assessment should be completed. For a start of care resumption of care assessment, complete as close to the time of the start of care resumption of care as possible. For a discharge assessment, complete as close to the time of discharge as possible. Now, this is important. You should observe the patient's behavior during the assessment for the signs and symptoms of delirium, meaning that you should consider the patient's behavior exhibited during your assessment of the patient including during the BIMS or other cognitive assessment. In addition, you will want to review the medical record documentation and consult with other staff, family members, or caregivers, and others in a position to determine the patient's baseline status compared to the status on the day of the assessment. Consider all relevant information and use clinical judgment to determine if an acute change in mental status has occurred. We start by coding C1310A, acute onset of mental status changes. We ask ourselves, is there an evidence of an acute change in mental status from the patient's baseline? So you would code zero, no, if there is no evidence of an acute mental status change from the patient's baseline. Code one, yes, if the patient had an alteration in mental status observed or reported or identified that represents an acute change from baseline. A dash is a valid response for this item. Here are some examples of an acute mental status change. A patient who is usually noisy or belligerent becomes quiet, lethargic, or inattentive. A patient who is normally quiet and content suddenly becomes restless or noisy. A patient who is usually able to find their way around their living environment begins to get lost. 
Then we move on to C1310B in attention. Consider, did the patient have difficulty focusing attention? For example, being easily distractible or having difficulty keeping track of what was being said. So we will assess attention separately from level of consciousness and consider an additional step to identify difficulty with attention is to ask the patient to count backwards from 20. So for the coding of C1310B and attention. Code zero, behavior not present. If the patient remains focused during the interview and all other sources agree that the patient was attentive during other activities. Code one, behavior continuously present does not fluctuate. If the patient had difficulty focusing attention, was easily distracted, or had difficulty keeping track of what was said, and the inattention did not vary. All sources must agree that inattention was consistently present to select this code. Code two, behavior present fluctuates. If inattention is noted during the assessment or any source report, any sources report that the patient had difficulty focusing attention, was easily distracted or had difficulty keeping track of what was said and the inattention varied or if information sources disagree in assessing the level of attention. A dash is a valid response for this item. The next item, C1310C, is disorganized thinking. Consider when you were doing the assessment, was the patient's thinking disorganized or incoherent, rambling or irrelevant conversation, unclear or illogical flow of ideas, or unpredictable, switching from subject to subject. In essence, disorganized thinking is evidenced by rambling, irrelevant, and or incoherent speech. Coding for this item is similar to the ones before, but specific to disorganized thinking behaviors. So we will code zero behavior not present if all sources agree that the patient's thinking was organized and coherent, even if answers were inaccurate or wrong. Code one, behavior continuously present does not fluctuate. If during the assessment and according to other sources, the patient's responses were consistently disorganized or incoherent, conversation was rambling or irrelevant, ideas were unclear or followed illogically, or the patient unpredictably switched from subject to subject. Code two, behavior present fluctuates if during the assessment or according to other data sources, the patient's responses fluctuated between organized, incoherent, and I'm sorry, disorganized, incoherent, and organized clear. Also code is fluctuating if information sources disagree. A dash is a valid response for this item. The last sub-item for signs and symptoms of delirium is C1310D, altered level of consciousness. For this, we ask ourselves, did the patient have an altered level of consciousness as indicated by vigilant, lethargic, stuporous, or comatose behaviors? Now let's consider what those four behaviors are. Vigilant is considered when a patient startles easily to any sound or touch. Lethargic is considered when the patient repeatedly dozes off when you're asking questions but responds to voice or touch. Stupor is considered when the patient is very difficult to arouse and to keep aroused for the interview. And comatose is considered when a patient cannot be aroused despite shaking and shouting. Now let's review the coding instructions for this item. Code zero, behavior is not present. If all sources agree that the patient was alert, maintained wakefulness during conversation, interviews, and activities. Code one, behavior continuously present does not fluctuate if during the assessment and according to other sources, the patient was consistently lethargic, stuporous, vigilant, or comatose. Code two, behaviors present fluctuates if during the assessment or according to other sources, the patient's level of conscious, consciousness varied. For example, the patient was at times alert and responsive while at other times the patient was lethargic, stuporous, or vigilant. 
code as fluctuating if information sources disagree. A dash is a valid response for this item. Okay, now that we've completed the instructions for C0, C1310, what does this all mean? The OASIS-C provides this scoring guide to help make meaning of the coding of, for the CAM. In the next few slides, we'll walk step-by-step step through this guidance. So for the first condition, we need to consider if C1310A equals one or C1310B, C or D equals two. So this first condition um, needs to be true. And then we need to look at the second condition. This focuses on C1310B and attention. Assuming that the first condition is met, the second condition must also be met. Item C1310B and attention is coded as a one or a two. This methodology concludes with a third condition. In that third condition, we assume that the first and the second conditions are met. And then the third condition in order to indicate delirium is that item C1310C, disorganized thinking is coded as a one or a two, or item C1310D, altered level of consciousness is coded as a one or a two. So to wrap things up, let's summarize what we covered in this session. New data elements have been identified for Section C cognitive patterns, and they are as follows. C0100 should brief interview for mental status C0200 through C0500 be conducted. This identifies if the brief interview, brief interview for mental status, the BIMS, a structured cognitive interview should occur. C0200 through C0500 brief interview for mental status determines a patient's attention, orientation, and ability to register and recall new information. C1310, signs and symptoms of delirium, identifies if a patient has signs and symptoms of delirium. So we do welcome questions. And if you would like to submit a question regarding this presentation, please send it to packtraining at econometricainc.com by August 31st, 2022. In September, a practice coding workshop will be held and we encourage you to attend. Based on, the, based on the review of questions submitted, select questions will also be discussed in a Q&A session during the September 2022 virtual live event. Thanks for reviewing and we look forward to sharing more insight at the September virtual workshop.